Kuzu Zambola. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. My name is Chigmi Nobu and this is a physics lesson for key stage 4, grades 9 to 10. In this lesson, we will look at yet another important discovery to our humankind in the field of physics known as Archimedes principle. We will try and understand what Archimedes principle says with a simple experiment followed by some practice problems. So, by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to state Archimedes principle, verify Archimedes principle through simple experiment, and finally solve some problems related to Archimedes principle. Now, let me begin by asking you a quick question. Have you ever wondered why a ship floats in water or why a helium filled balloon rises in air? Well, as you would be aware, when a body is immersed or for this matter, let's just say when a body is submerged in the fluid, fluid in this case can be liquid or gas the body experiences upward force which is known as a buoyant force or simply upthrust. So upthrust is that upward force experienced by the body when it is immersed in the fluid. Let's now move on to a quick demo and here I have a beaker with water filled to its brim. And here, I have a rubber cork in my hand. Now, if I immerse this rubber cork into the water in the beaker, what would happen to the level of water? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Let's just do it and see. I am going to lower this rubber cork into the water. And as we just saw, the water level in the beaker rose up and it got spilled out, right? And this phenomenon was observed by one of the great scientists known as Archimedes long time ago. In fact, it all began when Archimedes was assigned a task to prove that the crown made for Hiron, the king of Syracuse, was not made of pure gold as the goldsmith had claimed. Once, when he was getting into the bathtub, he noticed that further down he sank, higher the water level would rise and more water spilled out. He realized that he had found the solution to Hiram's problem. He was so excited by this discovery that he jumped out of the tub at once and ran all the way to his house without remembering to put on his clothes and shouting Eureka Eureka which means I found it I found it he was excited that he had found a way to measure the volume of irregular shaped object as the volume of water spilled out is equal to the volume of object immersed in water this helped him determine the density of the crown and compare with that of pure gold, whereby density is equal to mass over volume. So this further led him to formulate a scientific theory called Archimedes principle, which states that when a body is submerged in a fluid, which is liquid or gas, it experiences an upthrust, which is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the body. So what this essentially means is, in, our, in my earlier demo, if I had collected the spilled out water and measured its weight, the upthrust experienced by this body, a rubber cork, will be equal to the weight of the spilled water. As all science theories and principles have ways to prove it, 
so does the Archimedes principle. And you know what? It's pretty simple. We can do this simple experiment to verify Archimedes principle right now. All you need is a displacement can. So this is known as displacement can. Here I have a digital weighing machine. I have a spring balance. So we're going to use spring balance as well. And we will need a small object. An object I have right now is a rubber cork. You can use any object so long as the object does not float in water. I'll tell you why we can't use the object that floats in water. We'll of course need a piece of thread. I prefer to use the cotton thread so that it doesn't slip when you make knot. You will need an empty beaker and some water of course. So first we are going to start our experiment from here. So what we are going to do is we will plug in the spout of this displacement can, the outlet of the displacement can using one of my, our fingers and fill in with water all the way to the top. Even if you don't fill it all the way to the top, it has to be above the level of the spout. The displacement can is now filled with water to its top. Next, I let the spout open and let the water flow out of the spout so that water level reaches the height of the spout. Just like this. Having done this, we are going to use this spring balance. This is called spring balance as I have introduced earlier and measure the weight of this object. The object that we have right now is a rubber cork. So, of course, you will have to use a piece of thread to tie the rubber cork and make a small loop at the other end of the thread so that you can hang it from the spring balance. So we are measuring the weight of this object in air right now. And if I am reading the scale correctly, it is 50 gram force right now. Having done this, we are going to record the reading in the table that I have already prepared here so that we save time. It is 50 gram force. Next, we are going to weight, take the weight of this empty beaker. But before that, we want to make sure that the beaker is totally empty and there's not even a single drop of water in here. So it is pretty good to measure right now. And we are going to use this weighing machine. So I place this on the weighing machine and the reading on the weighing machine is 74.8 gram force. Like I said earlier, we are adding this F, although the reading says only gram we are adding force to indicate that it is not merely a mass now having done this what we are going to do next is we are going to again use this spring balance and measure the weight of this object which is rubber cork in water earlier we measured the weight of this object in air but this time we are going to measure the weight of this object in water so before I do that I would like you to make a quick guess of what would happen to the reading on spring balance when we measure the weight of this object in water would it increase would it decrease or would it remain same and if you say it would increase why would it increase if you say it would decrease why would it decrease similarly if you see it would remain same, why would it remain same? 
as we do that we want to place this empty beaker below the spout so that we collect the water that flows out of the spout because we know in our earlier experiment when we immerse object in water the object is going to occupy certain space and as a result the water level is going to rise up so the water level right now in this displacement can is exactly to the height of the spout so as we lower this object in water obviously the level is going to increase and it's going to flow out of the spout so we want to collect that water displaced by this object now let's take the weight of this object in water and this is what it happens as you can see the water flows out now earlier I mentioned that the object cannot be an object that totally floats on water so you see the reason why because if it floats on water the reading that you will see here in this on the spring balance will be zero so it has to be an object that goes into water well so if I may take the reading it is just above 25 gram so the scale of this spring balance ranges from 0 to 250 and each small division is 5 grams so it's just above 25 gram which tells me that it is 20 gram so let's record the weight of this object in water that is equal to 20 gram force and this shall be called as our apparent weight the weight of the object in air shall be called as our true weight now uh, we have water displaced by this body collected in this beaker so we are going to now take the weight of this water together with this beaker using the digital weighing machine here I go and the reading on our digital weighing machine is 105.1 gram force right so we have weight of empty beaker already taken we have weight of beaker plus water that is displaced by the body so now we get the weight of displaced water so how do we get that we subtract 74.8 gram force from 105.1 so that gives us I think 30.3 gram force so this is the weight of liquid displaced by the body now coming back to this part we have true weight of the body that is weight in air we have apparent weight of the body that is weight in water now as you can see when the body was immersed in water the body lost its weight significantly from 50 it went down to 20 gram force so that amount of weight lost when the body was immersed in water is what actually upthrust is so if we subtract apparent weight from true weight what we get is the loss in weight and which is equal to upthrust so our upthrust right now is 20 minus 50 gives us 30 gram force now if we look at the board we can apparently see that the magnitude of the upthrust experienced by the body and the magnitude of the weight of the liquid displaced by the body is almost same here we have 30 gram force and here we have 30.3 gram force there's of course difference of 0 0.3 which is expected in science experiment like this but the values that we got are very close hence 
we can, from this experiment, we can conclude that when the body is immersed in liquid, the buoyant force or upthrust experienced by the body is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the body. So, this is how we verify and prove Archimedes principle. Now that we are done with verifying Archimedes principle, let's now proceed to solving some simple problems based on it. So here's a question. It says, a body weighs 40 Newton in air and 30 Newton when completely immersed in water. Find, number one, the loss in weight of the body. Number two, the upthrust on the body. Okay, here's the solution. As always, we will write down the given variables first. So we have true weight for weight. I'm using this short form. That is equal to 40 Newton. We have apparent weight equal to 30 Newton. And in the first part of question, we are supposed to find out the weight lost by the object when it was immersed in the water. So our weight lost will be equal to, of course, true weight minus apparent weight. True weight minus apparent weight that is equal to 40 Newton minus 30 Newton. This gives us 10 Newton. So this is the answer for our first part of the question. Second part of the question says find the upthrust experienced by the body. According to Archimedes principle, we know that upthrust experienced by the body is equal to the weight lost by the body when immersed in water. Therefore, we can say that the upthrust or the buoyant force is also equal to 10 Newton. As I mentioned earlier, Archimedes principle is applied in ship, in submarine, hydrometer, hot air balloon, electrometer, etc. Now as an extension, I would like you to research on your own about how Archimedes principle is applied across all of this. So with this, I come to the end of my session. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did. I'll see you next time. Kadinchela.